Welcome back to Newton, Kansas, the city of no mufflers. Nobody has mufflers on their cars here. Every car that goes by sounds like a helicopter. But yes, welcome back to the wizard shop. Let's talk about this 2011 Dodge Charger. So it's been one of those days, guys. Seems like every other car that goes by is so loud, it actually sounds like it's going to come through the building. There's been a few times I'm talking to my guys and I can't even hear them because the mufflers are, or the lack thereof, is so loud. I don't know why it's that way. I never really noticed it that much, but Hoovy pointed it out to me one day and I realized, I was like, you know what? You're right. Every other car has no muffler in Newton. That's really crazy. But anyways, this car came from Oklahoma. It's becoming a regular occurrence that customers are coming from out of state because they want their car fixed right without being robbed. This one's got a, a small slew of things to get fixed, nothing major. We'll go through what we did to this car, we'll take a look at it. And unfortunately I don't have a vape pen with me so I can do my charger bro thing and a big cloud of vape. What Mrs. Wizard? You don't even have a vape pen, what are you talking about? No, but you need one if you have a charger. I guess. Okay, we'll go ahead and open the hood. We'll look around the car, look at the interior, and talk about what we did to this car and how it didn't cost that much to fix it. It's already done. Here we have the venerable 5.7 Hemi. It's actually a very good engine. I like them. They're easy to work on, unless you have cam and lifter problems. Then it's just like an LS motor. The heads have to come off. Luckily, this one doesn't have that kind of a problem, but what it came in here for is there were codes making a check engine light saying oil pressure issues and wrong oil weight. It didn't have the wrong oil weight. So I connected my Autel tool, my handy dandy Autel Maxisys 908 and looked at live data. With the engine off, the key on, it had 99 pounds of pressure. All the time, 99 pounds of pressure. I unplugged the sensor which is you can see it's brass colored right down through there. Not too hard to get to, but I unplugged it to see if there was any change and it stayed at 99 PSI. That told me right away that sensor is dead. We ordered a new sensor, we put it in, and voila. It's happy with the oil weight now. It's also happy with the oil pressure reading. 40, 50 PSI cold, it reads perfectly fine now. It's totally happy. That is a scenario where you could get ripped off at some shops where they would say, oh, you need this or you need that. No, it just needs a sensor, a simple sensor. Back in business. The customer did complain about a small exhaust leak. They wondered why has it always been ticking, a little tick all the time. We did check the exhaust manifolds, which can be a problem on these. This little studs break off, little 10 millimeter tiny, or maybe they're eight millimeter. They're tiny little bolts, studs. Luckily that wasn't the problem, the exhaust is totally fine. It has what's called a hemi-tick. It's very common on these engines, it's just a, a valve train clatter or a noise. Nothing's really wrong. There are forums and forums and forums of guys that have tried different oil weights, tried this, tried that, and it still has the hemi-tick. You just have to end up living with it. There's nothing wrong, they're just going to have to kind of deal with the noise. It's actually not very loud. It was just just a small enough noise to raise a concern. So we didn't do anything with that. It's not going to hurt the car. There are literally hundreds of thousands of these engines on the road with a Hemi tick. In fact, on a hot summer day, you can sit at a red light at the corner and watch Dodge Rams go by or these. And they come up to the red light and you can hear the Hemi tick. I don't know. What do you do? You go fix all of them? Nobody's doing it. Since it doesn't hurt the engine or damage the engine, there's really no reason to tear it apart or try to do anything with it, so we just left that be. So this is the 2011 Charger RT. It's got the Hemi as denoted on the side of the car. The front, this is the updated styling as compared to an 07 or an 08 Charger. It's kind of like a shark nose. It looks like a pointed nose. It's kind of a cool look to it. It's got the red calipers that say Charger on them. I kind of like these cars. I know the 07s and 8s and 9s are based off of Mercedes E-Class. A lot of the parts and things are very similar and we'll see that when we look underneath. And we go down the side here, it's not damaged. 
Amazingly, it doesn't have red mud all over it since it's from Oklahoma. So many of those vehicles down there. There's a little bit, there's a little dust. It's got a red tint to it. Something about Oklahoma and red dirt. The rear end looks good. I really like the, the tail lights on these. It goes all the way across. Again, no damage on this side. Everything looks good. It's a really nice color. This is one of me and Mrs. Wizard's favorite colors. Either a silver or a gray or white. That's why her Levante is white, which she is really enjoying lately. I, I am, but I don't know if I really claim as white as my favorite color. It's just the color that they had when at the lot. But yeah, it's a good color. I, I like it. It's still working. There's a small scrape on the bumper, maybe from a parking stall or something like that, but nothing too serious. This car has about 196,000 miles on it. It's doing really good for the age. These Hemi engines really are pretty good. But the dash is not cracked. It's a little dusty in here, but not too bad. It's got the typical simple Chrysler or Dodge dash. There's not a whole bunch of fancy features or anything going on. It's very simplistic. Not a whole lot of pomp and circumstance, but it, it looks nice. It's got an RT shifter. It looks kind of like a manual shift. A center console, little cup holder deal here. Seats are cloth. They're in good shape for the miles. Headliner is good. It's not all drooping or coming down. And the back seats are also in pretty decent shape. No, this is not my vape pen. This is the starter button that went bad on this car. Sometimes it wouldn't even work. It was having issues and the customer supplied a new one and we just replaced it for them. It's got a nice red one now. It didn't take very long and we were able to get that replaced for them. Totally took care of that problem. So I'll leave that one right there. They can do something with it or I can throw it in the trash, whatever they want to do. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the lift. Okay, so we got this thing up in the air. Up front, there's a few shields. You can see there's a few little scrapes here, maybe like a parking stall or something. Nothing too big of a deal. But as we go back, I'll show you some things that has Mercedes-Benz DNA on this car. Let's go ahead and check the brakes, which have got about 30% life left on them. They still got a little life. Sway bar link is good, but as you can see right here, there's a blue color. We had to put sway bar bushings on it. The customer said when they were driving, it sounded like a bunch of rocks underneath there. And it's very common on these for the, the rubber to go bad, and this entire bar just bounces all over the place. We got new bushings in place, and that sound is completely gone now. Go to the other side. You can see there's also a nice new bushing there. Brake pads are about 20 30 percent left. Again, sway bar links are good. Let's see if there's any leaks. Take a peek in there. Nice and dry. Very dry, in fact. You can see that everything has a red tinge to it. That's the Oklahoma dirt I was talking about. Now as we move back to here, this pan right here, what does that look like, guys? Mercedes-Benz. I think that's a, a NAG1 or NAG1, NAG2 transmission or something like that. But it, it is definitely from Mercedes-Benz. This is some of the things that happened when Mercedes and Chrysler used to be together. They're no longer together. Now they're owned by Fiat. We can see here, Chrysler never had these types of flex joints until they merged with Mercedes, Chrysler Daimler. It has an E-Class style drive shaft. Here's our exhaust. 
more red tinge dirt to everything. Stock mufflers. Again, here's our flex joint, just like a Mercedes Benz. And this would be here, it says, made in Germany. Let's check the brakes over here. About 30 to 40% left. CV boots are good. CV shafts are good. This is all Mercedes stuff here as well. Go over to here. Brakes look good. Nothing's loose. CV shaft looks good. And more Mercedes suspension. And then there's our stock resonators out the back, or mufflers, whatever you want to call them. And it has a little tow bar, little baby tow hitch, Mrs. Wizard. It's so cute. It takes a little one inch bar. I think that's 3,500 pounds. I don't know. I don't know if I'd tow that much with this. Or with that. Yeah. The tires look good. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. Now obviously this is not a German car, but there is so many German parts on this car. It's probably about half and half. It's kind of a mix of different things going on. The, the push button, start, the steering wheel, all this, a lot of the stuff is Mercedes-Benz, but the engine's American, the styling is American, just a lot of German parts underneath. One of the reasons why I did this video today is to show you guys, you see a lot of cars in the background or different things going on, but you, what you don't see is the day-to-day -day cars that come and go. This is one of them. For every car you see on a video, there's probably three or four more that we worked on that you didn't even see, and you probably won't see. There's a lot of just standard cars that come in, we get them fixed, and they're out the door. There are cars that we fix that come in and are gone before Mrs. Wizard even comes in in the afternoons after school to say hi. There's cars that are fixed and gone, and she's like, oh, okay. This one didn't break the bank either. Not every car that comes in here is five grand to fix it. This one was under a grand, it was in the hundreds. It was five or six, seven hundred, I don't know the exact bill, but it wasn't so high, it was very easy. One of the things I try to do is keep repeat customers in the shop. And I believe that you're not going to have them if the next guy that comes in, you just keep hammering them, with bill, big bills and keep hammering them. That's not the way to keep them coming back, so. This customer's from out of state, and I'm pretty sure they will have no trouble to travel out of state again for more work because we didn't take advantage of them. That's why they're here. The shops around them may be taking advantage of them. They know that won't happen here. So just a few items that I just showed you. We got them fixed. This car's actually done. We'll call the customer and get this car out of here. But before it went, I thought you guys would like to check it out. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to fix this car, Check my Amazon Affiliates link in the description below. All the tools I use in the shop are listed there for sale and we get a small cut. We really appreciate it. And make sure you hit the subscribe button because there's many more cool projects to come. Thanks for watching.